my son got here this morning. <laughs>
closer to you and watch over and guide us in all things we do and say. Christ, help me pray. Amen. Our next hymn will be Tell Me the Old, Old Story on 621. We'll do this one two times through, verses 1 and 3. 621, verses 1 and 3.
job, young people, you do so good. Uh, I appreciate your humoring the preacher. It's humor the preacher day today. And that's all right. Good morning, church. It's good to have you here with us today. Uh, make sure, as you have an opportunity, uh, to highlight one more announcement. And I know that they probably don't want anything big to be said about it. But there is going to be a simple reception right after services for Opal Parish and her <laughs> third birthday uh, that is coming up. Uh, so uh, after service, if you would, go downstairs and wait a moment too, and we'll have an opportunity to, to give honor to people we appreciate uh, in, in that way. So we did want to make that announcement uh, to kind of get that in your mind uh, as we get moving along. Uh, the question for you today uh, is quite simply this. What do you crave? Crave. What a good word, right? I crave. Usually what goes along with that is what? I crave chocolate. <laughs> that goes right ahead. Of I crave coffee. Uh, I crave uh, caffeine, uh, right, uh, in some way or another. Uh, cravings are such a part of life that, that sometimes, and when it's a part of our life, it just becomes a natural part, we believe, to us. We always have that drink. We always have this dessert. We always have, and so when we miss it, uh, it's something like we yearn for it, uh, when it has already been a part of our routine and our life uh, for quite a while. The question I want to ask you today, as we think about this and as we go back to the book of Psalms, uh, we're going to take a moment of introduction, but we'll finally make it to Psalm chapter 63, if you have your Bibles and you want to start to finding your way there. But here's the question. Are you connected to the Lord God like the way that you crave things that are a part of your life? Uh, the psalmist in his expressions, as we will read it today, uh, really gets elaborate in the discussion about how much he loves the Lord. Do we crave the Lord that way? And quite honestly, we've talked about this before. Uh, and uh, I guess as I get older, the more I think about it. Does it bother you? Should it bother you that the Bible says that heaven is all about praising God? When you get to heaven, what are you going to do? Praise God. Does that bother you? Should it bother you when you think about what that means? What does it mean I'm going to praise God? How, is, how am I going to do that? What's that going to look like? You know, forever and ever and ever, day after, well, I mean, continually in that way, uh, as we're told about that connection that we have with God, uh, and we hear about it here while we're on this earth, what does that do with our expectation of what heaven will be like? Well, the truth of it is, and we're going to talk about praising God, craving to praise God uh, today, but praise can be such an awkward thing. It can be confusing. But it's made clearer, praise is made clearer by our connection with God. Consider this. You don't praise God by doing nothing. I think there's many Christians, when it comes to the term, do you praise God, would easily say, well, sure, I praise God. I go to church. Uh, I pray before a meal. Uh, I even pray at nighttime. Uh, I open my Bible. Uh, and sometimes we want to credit all of those separate activities as if we are praising God. Now, we can praise God through those activities and quite often, honestly, through many activities. But just because we're a part of some religious activity, as we're reminded several times in Scripture, doesn't mean that we praise God uh, within uh, those uh, activities. <laughs> The more we spend time with God, though, as the psalmist is going to point out today, the more you will desire praising Him. Do you struggle to praise God specifically? If so, the challenge then is to connect with God specifically. And what I mean by that is to come up with a discipline of praise in your life, but to create a structure where you do, where you take opportunity to praise God, because as it's one of those other spiritual disciplines that as you begin it, it may seem awkward and hard and almost unrealistic, but the more that you put it as a part of your life, the more it opens up and it blossoms and it grows. Consider this week what it means to have a connection with your Heavenly Father. If you have an opportunity to describe that, how would you describe it uh, in your, what it means to you to praise God? 
Uh, the great news is that praise is natural. And that praising God is, as we read scripture, expected. You are expected as a child of God to praise God. He planned for you to praise you. You can even say that God created you for the sole purpose of praising him. His goal for you in making you and putting your personality together and bringing you up through the people and the situations that he has put you through in your life has all will all come to the accumulation of you praising him. That's his whole goal for you. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 21. It says it quite simply. You are created to praise God. This people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise. The whole purpose that God has done in making you is to praise him. With this in mind, let's go to our text. Psalm chapter 63. Great psalm. Uh, and then coming up with just a few psalms, uh, the, a few psalms to highlight during this series as we make our way through this book. Uh, it's kind of hard to pick and choose which ones to get, but uh, this one kind of uh, opened itself up, and I think that we should uh, share with it together. Uh, psalm chapter 63, let's read the whole thing. It's 11 verses. Uh, it begins like this. O God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you. In a dry and weary land where there is no water, I have seen you in the sanctuary. And beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips my mouth will praise you. On my bed I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. Those who seek my life will be destroyed. They will go down to the depths of the earth. They will be given over the sword and become food for jackals. But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear by God's name will praise him. Where the mouths of liars will be silenced. To praise God. And as we look at this chapter, it's important that we look to the context of the chapter. And we are in the book of Psalms, uh, so these chapters in Psalms were written as songs, uh, as places, uh, as words to be used during worship to directly praise God. This was, in some ways, you could consider the hymnal. Uh, even as the church begins, uh, what they didn't have was they did not have the New Testament. Uh, they used the Old Testament, and it was from these Psalms that we have so many quotes that come from. From, as we talked last week into the New Testament, uh, the writers wrote that for us, but it was also a part of their uh, way that they gathered together and praised to find some psalms to be able to express themselves to God. But we also look, if you have your own Bibles uh, open there, it makes a little note. It's important to even take care of the note that is listed there. And it says, at least in my scripture, it says this, a psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. And maybe the first thing that we need to do is in this observation is to consider what in the world that means. You know, what is that context that he gives uh, to that? Uh, I mean, I think it's a chance for us to consider that David, although he was a man who expressed great opportunities of praising God, had a hard life. He was running for his life on a couple separate occasions after uh, he had been anointed by God to be a king. And we talked last week a little bit uh, about how Saul wanted to try to keep him from taking over his kingship that he was anointed for uh, and laid, uh, set aside that David was going to be a great king in Israel. But it is in this context, uh, as the psalm writes today, that he is in the wilderness for another reason. <laughs> after he had already reigned for several years in his life, his son got greedy. The story of Absalom, we talked a couple week, years ago about uh, the life of David, and Absalom wanted to take the kingship away from his father. And so there's a point in his life that Absalom kicks his father out of the, t out of, uh, the uh, castle, uh, out of his reigning throne place, out of Jerusalem, and into the wilderness, trying to destroy his own father so that Absalom could be made king over David. And it's in these moments, it says in the wilderness, while David is struggling, trying to figure out what life is about, that God had called him to be king, and now he's sitting on a stone far away from his palace, what it must mean to praise God. And maybe the observation that we need to make at the beginning of the text is, sometimes 
the wilderness brings out the best opportunity of praise. Sometimes it's in the struggle. Sometimes it's in the survival that highlights the importance of connection with God. Maybe it's the elimination of the distractions uh, that are a part of our life or the rush of directed importance that enables one's heart uh, to come to God in praise. You know, I think sometimes when we hear these words of difficult people going through difficulties and, and not to diminish the life that you have been through, but we have a lot of comforts too. Uh, and I think maybe uh, the first consideration uh, with this text is that sometimes our comforts can squelch our praise. Do comforts get in your way of praising God? We got it good. I got so many comforts in my life. Uh, I got three rocking chairs that I don't even use. I have so much comfort uh, in my life. I've got more places to sit and more things, uh, more stuff uh, that just distracts. It's so easily to distract us away from the things that we have. And sometimes one of the biggest obstacles in our life is just the consideration of what is around us in trying to live a life uh, of comfort. How does your blessings block your praise to God. Sometimes God gives us amazing things. Family and opportunities and stuff and the ability to work and uh, just, just blessing upon blessing. But sometimes if we're not careful, those are the things that the enemy can use to put in our way between us and praising God. To understanding Praising, to understand praising God to the point of craving, like the psalmist points out in this passage, uh, to understand his relationship and want to be close to God, sometimes it's best to consider what suppresses the praise in our life. What else is an obstacle in praise to God? Again, in this study and considering the Psalms and learning what it means to praise God, uh, sometimes we use these words and it sounds like a great thing, but it seems so far away. If I were to tell you, hey, go off by yourself for five minutes and praise God, you know, what would you do? Well, probably pray, uh, maybe read scripture. Uh, I'd sing a song, or maybe some of you would. Maybe you would do something even different in that way. Uh, but sometimes when we talk about the importance of praising God and given the chance uh, to show that praise to God, we don't know what to do because... We've had so many other stuff getting in the way that we haven't let it teach us how to praise God. What else is an obstacle to <coughs> praising God? <coughs> Self-sufficiency opposes praise. When you think you don't need God, you know, when, when you think that you have been able to make everything that you have on your own, uh, you've worked hard enough and you've saved the best and you've created this structure around you, sometimes that very feeling itself of accomplishment keeps you from praising God. Self-esteem can keep you from praising. Self-love, selfishness. The selfish person will not have a heart of praise. The Christian author, C.S. Lewis, uh, says it this way. Have you ever stopped to ponder the irony of those who seemed drawn to and those who seemed offended and repelled by Jesus in the gospel story? He says it was the drunks, the prostitutes, the tax collectors who were drawn to him, and it was the seemingly righteous and religious and people of means and reputation that were offended by him. Lewis goes on to say, Prostitutes are in no danger of finding their present life so satisfactory that they cannot turn to God. The proud, the avaricious, and the self-righteous are in that danger. Sometimes one of the biggest obstacles that we have is the feeling that we've made it. It's the feeling of ourself. How selfishness pushes God out of the way. That's why we're reminded several times in the scripture that God opposes the proud. Because it stops us in our praise uh, for him. What brings a person to praise God? How easy is it for you? to go for, through a whole day uh, and not think about God and not actually praise God. And I know you're saying, wait a minute, preacher. Uh, I pray, uh, that's worship, and that's good, you know, as long as you're engaged in your prayers and not just giving God the shopping list. We're reminded of the parable uh, of the tax collector and the Pharisee. Uh, remember the story where the two men were praying there in the temple uh, and the Pharisee, all he wanted to talk about was himself and how great he was. And Jesus looked at him and says, don't you dare pray like that. <laughs> That guy is accomplishing nothing. But it was in the humility of the tax collector 
over in the corner as he understood who he was and how he should be connected to God, that in the repentant heart, in the submissive heart, that God was able, to, that Jesus was pointing to his disciples to show them how to pray. Just because you do religious acts doesn't mean you praise God. Praising God is a matter of your heart. It's a matter of opening yourself up and connecting to him. Let's look back at the passage uh, that it, it, it mentioned here in, in Psalm chapter uh, 63. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly, I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. That's desperation. That's a person who has come to the end of themselves and realizes that there's no other way that they're going to get to God besides just letting God come to them to surrender and let God show them what it means to praise. What chokes out our understanding of needing God? There's lots of distractions. Sometimes it's troubles. The difficulties in the life that we have. Sometimes it's unrepentant sins, uh, our rebellion, uh, our unwillingness to let go of those things that we know we should, or those things that hold us back because we are not in obedience with God. Sometimes those are what stand in the way of letting us praise God. Sometimes it's an undisciplined life, the chasing of comfort as we talked about. The enemy works, the devil works to, set, to pull you away from praising God. So... Uh, and here's where we're headed to. How can we be motivated to praise God? Let's look back at the passage. What motivated the psalmist to praise there in verse 3? He says it this way. Now let's get verse 2 and 3 together. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. One of the biggest things that is going to bring you to praising God is the understanding of what it means to say that God loves you. The love of God is the biggest thing that's going to draw you to an opportunity to praise. Uh, and it's one of those things, the Christianese of it all, right? It's one of those words that we talk about in church. It's one of those concepts that we throw around, how important it is to, ha to have the love of God in your life. But if you need motivated to praise, if you're kind of on the outside and not sure how in the world you're going to connect to God, you need to dive back into the meaning, the depth, and the breadth of the God's love for you. Sometimes we think we're going to make it to heaven on our own. It's so foolish, the world that we live in and the culture that we're in. They think that heaven is uh, structured by mankind and that heaven is going to be whatever mankind wants it to be. And that's so far from the truth. The opportunity to be in heaven is to be with God and be praising God. And for that reason, we have to come to God and understand the impact that just opening heaven up to you uh, allows. Uh, and that's why we worship. And that's why we come together on Sunday. And that's why we do communion. And that's why the cross highlights our worship time. Because it's only through the cross of Jesus that we can approach God. It's only because of the love of God, the arms of God, that are reached out to us to bring us to Him. And sometimes in a self-sufficient world, in a culture that thinks that they have things figured out, in a progressive uh, world, uh, we think that we don't need God that way. We don't need God's love and how tragic that is. Because your love is better than life, the psalmist writes. Because for that reason, that motivation, I will praise you. I came across the old hymn that I want to read for you this morning. Oh, the love of God. It's in your hymn, hymnal. Uh, and, uh, it just says it this way. The, the penmanship and the, the, the writer really expresses it well. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes behind, beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bowed down with care. God gave his son to win. His erring child he reconciled and pardoned him from sin. Oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. When ory time shall pass away and earthly thrones and kingdoms fall, when men who here refuse to pray on rocks and hills and mountains call, God's love so sure shall still endure and measureless and strong, redeeming grace to Adam's race, the saints and angels' song. Could we with ink the ocean fill? And were the skies of parchment made, were every stalk on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade, to write the love of God above, 
would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole, go stretch from sky to sky. O oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. <clears throat> the love of God, what should motivate you? To praise God to get better into understanding what it means for God to open up salvation to your life. Uh, that God's redemption for you, God's plan for you, and, and that, that there is a God who created this whole earth who knows you, and he's planned for you to be with him, and the way that he planned for you to be with him has nothing to do with you, but everything to do with his love that was given to us through Jesus Christ. What does loving God cause you to do? Better said, what does God loving you cause you to do? It's not our love, uh, yeah, but our response to God's love that makes a difference. And that response is the beginning of praise. Praise, praise is spontaneous, but praise is also planned. Praise is a discipline. Uh, going back to the scripture, you'll notice that he mentions three times uh, throughout the day uh, that he has an expression of praise. Uh, he prays when he's thirsty. Uh, he prays when he's hungry. Verse 5 and 6, my soul will be satisfied as with the richest foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. It's setting aside the time, the discipline of a life that says, okay, during this time, I'm going to praise. During this time, I'm going to spend time with God. Oh, how foolish we are as Christians, particularly compared to some of the other religions in the world. Sometimes they're so dedicated and so disciplined about the important time of stopping whatever they're doing and just focusing on their God, their false God, their demon God. But here we are who serve and love a living God. Do we take time? Do we discipline time in our life to pray? Here's your challenge. You need to praise God, set time aside, create the opportunity where you're going to get away from those distractions and just have a chance to focus on God, to discipline uh, your life so that you can uh, pray with Him. The psalmist says he takes worship home. Uh, he makes the comment, what I have seen, in verse 2, uh, I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and glory. And then at the end of the day, when he's laying in bed at night, he thinks about what goes on. And so it's one thing to be in community with Jesus as followers here at church and have the chance to sing songs and to shake hands and to find uh, the ability of loving other people uh, that we do every Sunday morning together. But it continues on past Sunday. <laughs> Just worshiping God on Sunday, just praising God one day, one hour a week isn't enough to continue to draw your hearts toward Him. Make more time to praise the Lord. Praising, as we talked about last week a little bit, if you're still confused on what it means to praise God, do I just say, what words do I say, what expressions do I use? Uh, it goes back to thanking God, uh, to listening to God. Uh, to reading his word is a great way uh, in praising God and also just to compliment God, to brag about God, to talk about how great God is to you and tell him uh, all the amazing things that he does. We know that even in our own relationships. If we want to have an opportunity to create a connection, to create, going back to the first word, a craving, uh, a, 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 a connection that we have with the people around us in our relationships, the best way to do that is what? Compliments. Oh, to give a few compliments uh, can open up all kind of opportunities, and we know that. And it's true also with God, but compliments work both ways with God. Understand this, God does not feed off of your compliments. He is almighty. He doesn't need compliments, but you need to compliment him because you feed off your compliments to God as your heart opens up and gives you the, the uh, connection uh, of praise. A right perspective produces wise choices and keeping the importance in front of you. Praise. Praising God. As we go through several of this book, there's all kind of opportunities to say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And I hope you take a chance to grow in what it means to praise God even in your own life. So I want to end today uh, connecting this psalm uh, with another psalm. 
Uh, and, and it's quite simple. Uh, what we're going to do, though, is have an interactive reading. Uh, if you have your Bibles and want to follow along, although your part is also right up here on the screen. Uh, Psalm chapter 136. This was Psalm 63. And a lot of times when we look at some of the Psalms, they go together. They're kind of partnered up with one another. But Psalm chapter 136, there's an opening phrase to each verse and an ending phrase to each verse. And the ending phrase is real simply this. His love endures forever. Uh, some versions will say, His mercy endures forever. His loving kindness endures forever. But as a chance to just kind of do something different and close our message time today with a short opportunity of praise, we're going to do a responsive reading, okay? Uh, just to kind of change things up and give you a chance uh, to do that corporately. So I'm going to read the first part of the verses, uh, and then I'll pause. And let's all go in the same translation, and we'll just say, His love endures forever. So let's practice. One, two, three. His love endures forever. Good, good, good. We'll go all the way through uh, these verses that are, that are together. It says this in Psalm chapter 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders. His love endures forever. Who by his understanding he made the heavens. His love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters. His love endures forever. Who made the great lights. His love endures forever. The sun to govern the day. The moon and the stars to govern the night. His love forever. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt His love forever. and brought Israel out from among them His love forever. with a mighty hand and outstretched arm. His love forever. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder His love forever. and brought Israel through the midst of it His love forever. but swept Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea. His love forever. To him who led his people through the desert. Who struck down great kings His love and killed mighty kings. His love Sihon, king of the Amorites, His love and Og, king of Bashan, His love and gave their land as an inheritance, His love an inheritance to the servant of Israel, His love to the one who remembered us in our low estate His love and freed us from our enemies. His love who gives food to every creature. His love Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love forever. His love endures forever even longer than that chapter was. <laughs> uh, and, and sometimes it's in the re repetition uh, that we have a chance to go either way. Sometimes the repetition of seeing God's love draws us closer to him. And sometimes in the repetition even of our daily life as we call ourselves his child and we're just doing the same thing over and over again and sometimes that dulls us in our sensitivity to what it means to praise God. Psalm 136 is a great chance to share together. This was one of the last uh, of the Halil songs that the children of Israel sang as they were getting ready to bring their Passover sacrifice in. And they read through uh, the four or five of these psalms, uh, and they kind of brought the, their sacrifice in as they all chanted these psalm, psalms together uh, and brought that uh, Passover lamb in. I think this is the week where uh, Israel is celebrating <coughs> Passover in, in whatever realm that they can. Uh, but it's also a chance to remember what God has done for us. Uh, and the great part of the message of Jesus Christ, the great part of the message of the cross, is that God's love is far greater than we understand. <laughs> And the more that we dwell upon that love, the more it ought to open up our heart so we, we can praise God even better than we did yesterday. How are you going to praise God? Again, the charge is, heaven is going to be about praising God. Are you ready for that? Are you practiced up? Better get practiced. And the good news is, it's not burdensome. Like all of God's mercies, as we submit to Him and have opportunity to express ourselves through praise, he pours it out upon us, and His Spirit leads us in praise so that we can have that connection. We come to the end of our service this morning, uh, the end of the message time, uh, to kind of say, okay, what do we need to do? What can we do 
uh, to praise God better. The obvious thing is to live a life of obedience. Uh, God has called you and he's laid out a plan for you. Uh, and in that means uh, to be his child. Uh, that means to follow him, uh, to get rid of those sins that are holding you back and that are obstacles uh, to you having that relationship with him that he so loves and dears. It's surrendering him uh, in baptism and letting his spirit live in your life to give you that direction. Those are the simple steps uh, that it takes. Our hymn of decision today is going to be uh, just as I am, uh, number 488. Uh, and as we get ready to sing that song, I want you just to think about what it means to, for you uh, to open up your heart in praise to God. What have you done? What is in the way of... And sometimes we make it so much about the activity, and that was what the beginning part of the message was about. It's not just about the activities that you do, but the engagement of your heart behind those activities. Why do you come to church? Why do you be good? Why do you give your money uh, to help others out? Why do you pray for our missionaries? Why do you pray for one another and the people on the prayer list? Let those directives be turned back to the Lord, and that's how it will blossom in your life. The song is just as I am. Let's stand and sing the first verse if you need to respond. Just as I am
here for the Lord's Supper. Let's turn to 336. There is a fountain. We'll sing verses 1 and 5. So two times through for this one as well. Verses 1 and 5, 336, if the men can come forward on that second time. <laughs> Either one of yeah. them? 
Okay. <laughs> Two sets of flowers there. Someone please take those home with them. Uh, on behalf of the family uh, of Judy, she would love for you to enjoy those with her. Yes. I think there's also food in the refrigerator that if anyone wants to take home with them, that has to be. Okay. Dinner. So there is some dinner down there too in the fridge. Uh, but make sure everyone heads that direction uh, as we finish up today uh, for reminding us about uh, the uh, simple birthday party for Opal. And Greg's pointing at something else. I'm, I'm just going to lock this door so they can't get out. <laughs> they have to go that way. The jumping party is also this Saturday. So everybody who loves to jump, and even if you don't want to jump, but you want to watch somebody else or bring somebody who does jump, uh, you're welcome to bring friends, family, whoever, uh, to the uh, Omni Jump Center. Uh, and there'll be pizza directly afterwards. That is this Saturday afternoon. Pay attention to that. Uh, is there any other announcements that we need to make? What time is Saturday, Kate? Three o'clock is when it begins. Three to five in the jump, and then Monocle's Pizza uh, after that. Uh, the church will take care of the bill for those things as a continue. Last announcement, snow. Let's stand. Close with the world prayer and then we'll be dismissed. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your goodness. Lord, thank you even in our futility uh, and in our sins uh, that you have called us to be your children. Uh, help us to come to realize uh, the fulfillment uh, of what that means through your goodness and through your love. Thank you, Lord, for this congregation. Thank you for the people who are here, those who have been here in the past. Lord, the opportunity to build a faith upon faith. May we continue to pass that along to the next generation until you come back. And Lord, it's with that we look forward to uh, the chance to see you come back from heaven and take us home to be with you. Open up our hearts. Uh, help us to learn to praise. Help us to learn to pray and, and to pray for one another as well. Thank you, Lord, for all of your good gifts that you give to us through your spirit and the blessing of Jesus Christ. Amen.